Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to make my strongest case for why I believe that the 18 month age gap between children is the very best. All right, if you're new here, hi, I'm Claire. Welcome, come on in, make yourselves comfortable. You'll find all sorts of homey, motherhood, family, cooking, cleaning, that kind of stuff over on this channel. So if you like that kind of stuff, definitely subscribe. We would love to have you. You may know if you're not new around here that I have two wonderful children, Fox, who is five, and Desmond, who is four. Technically, they are 19 months apart, but um, this list and what I'm talking about today would definitely be for kids who are probably at the 20 month mark between them and less, like anything under that would definitely apply to everything on this list. Before I get going, I do wanna point out that I feel very privileged and very lucky that I did get to choose the age gap between my children. Um, I know from very personal experience that not everyone is so lucky and has such an easy time getting pregnant or choosing, you know, when they have their baby. So um, definitely if that's, you and you're struggling or if, if this is um, not conducive to what you're going through in your life, skip this video. There's no need to be triggered by a, a silly age gap video. So uh, don't, don't let this hurt you in any way. I also want to say that every age gap, be it tiny or huge, has its good things and its bad things about it. All right, so I'm gonna break this down into three categories. We're gonna talk about the baby times, we're going to talk about the toddler times, and then the school age times, because that's as much experience as I have so far. So starting with the baby times, so I had an almost 19 month old child when I brought my newborn home. And the first great thing about this age gap is that there was no jealousy. My oldest son, Fox, cannot remember a time that existed before his brother. He's always been there. There was no difficult adjustment period. And I know not all kids have like a really hard time with that, but some kids really do. And it's a huge adjustment. I think it's really a great thing about this age gap that we never had to like adjust. Fox, my oldest, never had to make space or make time to add this new person. He's just always been there and I love it. The next great part about that baby stage was that none of the things I had were obsolete. So every once in a while, things get upgraded, things get changed. The latest Mamaroo comes out, the new best technology for, you know, the baby monitor comes out. And for me, all of those things were the same. Uh, nothing had sort of phased out tech wise in the amount of time between my kids. Um, and I didn't have to store any of them. They were just, right there for the next phase and I didn't have to buy anything, which was really, really nice. Along in that sort of same vein of things not being obsolete yet, it kind of was handy also for like my doctor experience. Um, I went to the same hospital, it had the same staff, the same rooms, like nothing had changed. Um, I had been going to my OB, there was hardly even a break from between the two of them where I wasn't seeing my OB all of the time. So uh, that was kind of nice. I felt really comfortable and close with the whole practice. And that was just really a handy thing. I didn't have to relearn how to have a baby because I just did it. Another thing that's really great about essentially having two babies at the same time um, is that the house is already baby proof. Uh, as soon as um, you know one starts walking, you put the gate up and then it's already there, it's good to go. The car is already set up to be baby friendly. The house, um, depending on you know where you live or what you're doing in our house, um, it was a very tiny house, but we had a nice little like little room set up for like all of their toys and all the playthings, and it was already there. I didn't have to like try to make new space for the new baby. You know, the bassinet was already in our room. Uh, you know, I didn't. Not only did I not have to buy anything, but the house and our lifestyle was already set up for a baby. And of course, a huge thing when they're babies is the hand-me-downs. And like I said before, the bigger things that kind of can become obsolete, but even the small things, the bottles, the breast milk bags, like all these little things that you have, like that you often get rid of after your first baby, like we still had them. So it was just really nice, The you know, the bottle rack and baby socks and all the clothes and all the books and all the stuff. We even still had diapers that we hadn't um, gone through with Fox uh, that we could use for Desmond. So um, just the incredible way to reuse things 
um, just saved us tons of money. We didn't have to pack things away. Uh, we didn't have to try to decide, you know, are we gonna use this later? Aren't we? What do we do with this? Do we give it away? Do we save it? Didn't have to go through any of that. It was really nice. And that sort of leads me into my first one of the sort of toddler stage. Um, and that is, is when one kid moves from a phase, the other one moves into it which is amazing in so many ways. So the second one kid doesn't like Paw Patrol anymore. The younger one is just hitting that Paw Patrol age and all of the Paw Patrol things don't have to get donated or sold. They can just go to the next child. Um, as soon as one doesn't need the potty anymore, like the little kid potty, the next one does. And so it's just this really great progression of our like stuff, our items. And um, the timing of that with the 19 months was just perfect. Like in some of those really big phases that they go through as toddlers amazing. I also really love it because we really only planned on having two kids. That's all we wanted so that we knew when my youngest moved out of a phase, we could then get rid of all of those things that had to do with that phase, whether it was nursing or bottle feeding or baby spoons or whatever. Um, then we could just get rid of them and we didn't have to worry about it anymore. So I really love the idea that I don't have like a basement or an attic full of stuff that I've had to store for years in preparation for the next baby. And not only the items that have to do with phases, but the parenting that comes along with the phases. I knew when to expect that 18 month sleep regression. I had gone through it with Fox and when Desmond hit it, I had really done it not that long ago, so I already knew what to do. I already knew what to expect. I didn't have to like search back in my memory for like, oh, maybe this fever is because he's teething. I already knew it because it just happened. Having those little phases so fresh in your mind makes it really easy to deal with. And I remember, okay, this is how potty training worked for Fox. I'll do the same thing for Desmond. And I didn't have to look at any books or like try to, you know, figure it out again. Another great thing about this age gap in the toddler phase is that they really start playing with each other. And I have just really been lucky with that. And my boys get along like pretty well. And of course, through this pandemic, it's been really amazing because they constantly have a playmate. So another great thing about this age is that they have similar interests. And this is really where when your youngest moves into the toddler phase, they actually, you know, start having interests and they start having preferences. And mine definitely looks to his brother to kind of introduce things and to know like what's cool. Uh, but it's really nice that um, similar music in the car. They're both into similar things on TV, similar books. Um, of course, they each have their own preferences, which is good. Um, but for the most part, I can pretty much make everybody happy. And I definitely could at that age. Um, with specific shows and music and activities. Um, they both would enjoy, you know, equally. All right, moving on to the school age children. Um, Fox, who is five, he is about to go to kindergarten in this upcoming school year and Desmond is going to go to preschool. Fox did go to preschool, not this pandemic year, but the year before that. Um, and we decided with the pandemic that since he had a fall birthday, October, we were going to wait till this year to do kindergarten. Um, so depending on your exact age gap and where it falls within the year, your kids might be back to back school years. And I think that that is great. First of all, I'm very familiar with the school. I know the teachers, I know the principal. Um, there aren't really huge changes that really happen from you know one year to the next year. Uh, so that's really nice when it comes to like, um, the PTA, which not this pandemic year, but the year before that I was a part of. Um, it's really nice that I will, I'll be able to do that for quite a few years within the same school, get to know other parents and the staff a lot better than if we were there one year and then four years later another time. Um, so I really liked that. Also, it means that between their elementary, middle and high school, they will spend more time at the same school. There will only be a couple years where they will be in separate schools and it'll just make the school run so much easier easier. So I'm very thankful for that. Also in the school time, it's really nice because they often fit in the same age bracket for things. A lot of things are three to five, five to seven. Um, so they can do a lot of the same clubs and be on the same teams together, which of course makes scheduling things so much easier. Um, I know as they get older and they have their specific preferences, I would never force them to do things together. I do think it's important that they have autonomy. Um, However, if they both want to do soccer and they're in the same age bracket, it's a time saver, it's a schedule saver, it's a stress saver, 
I love the idea that they can be involved in the same schedule if they want to. And I know I said for the other phases that similar interest is really important, but I find that now that they're getting to the school age, the similar interest thing is so much more handy than it was in any other phase. And that's because it spreads to a lot more things than just what entertains them. They eat the same types of food. They want to play the same type of games. Um, they want to talk about the same types of things. Their energy levels are very similar. Their bedtimes are the same. All of these nice little things that just make them really great companions for one another. And now I'm going to get really cheesy because the last best thing about this I know I said that they always have a playmate and whatnot but honestly deep down they have a best friend in one another for life and I really really hope to facilitate that strong relationship for the rest of their lives they are super close they tell each other everything they talk to each other all day long they never get sick of each other when they're in bed at night they're walkie talking to each other and I love the idea that um, my children each feel support from someone that's not an adult, that's not their parent, that they have this other support person in their life that's also going through life at a similar pace and time as they are. Uh, and I just think that it's wonderful and I love, love, love watching that part of them as they grow. So there you go, my experience of having two kids within 19 months of each other. Please leave me a comment down below. What are your kids' age gaps? What are the best things about the age gap? Like, I, I love how everybody has things that they love and don't love. Let me know what you think. And of course, come on back for more. I post two videos a week. So make sure you stick around and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.